Well, hello everybody. It's Uncle Jim again, and uh, I'm here by myself. But before I did this uh, scenic material on the shelf, I wanted to show you guys uh, the methods I use and that many people use. And I wanted to convey the fact that it isn't as hard as it looks. A lot of scenic material you can make yourself, as I've shown you in other videos. And uh, after years of collecting all these kind of things, I, I've, I've come to find out that it's pretty bulletproof. It's not like other YouTube video shows, like where it's cut and dry, you got to do it a certain way. Uh, if you make mistakes, like I did here, I'm going to show you how I fixed it. Uh, this is a shelf unit that's going to go up uh, in the freeze area around the racetrack, uh, displaying a collection of my club cars. And this is a model of a Willow Springs Raceway, which is in the desert. Now, the other day, I went ahead and did some scenic material, but it came out too, too rich looking, too green looking, too, too Northern California instead of uh, Arizona desert. So I'm going to show you today how I'm going to go about fixing it. Um, the fencing that I used on the back of this is nothing more than the uh, placemat that I had shown you guys earlier. And on the back are skewers I got at the grocery store and I glued them on and placed them on the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart so I can begin to show you guys how I go about working on the scenic material. These guys here, get these guys out of the way real quick. This started life as a door, a Luan door, that I cut into 11 and a half inches wide by 4 feet, which is the room that I had up above to hang it up. And what I did was I glued the fencing to the back of it. I've supported it. I've supported it with these odd weights so that I can get it level and then I put this chunk of steel behind it right here so that it could hold it more more solidly and I glued on the fence so after having made this surface the way I wanted it cut the slots built the bracketry underneath and glued this fence on what was left to do was the scenic material I started by taking just regular white glue and I would put a dot randomly because the goal was to get some tall grass growing. Now this came from uh, Phoenix Plus and they make a, a gold dry tone. They make a greener material and they also make a dark green. Dark green is not what I wanted to go for because again, we're, we're shooting for something drying in the desert. Now I have seen guys, and I have done that myself, used regular brushes like this, that, that, and you dip them into green paint and let them, let them stay there and get stained. You can make grass out of that. In this case, I, I'm using store-bought grass. So what I did is I took small tufts cut them into thirds, uh, took the white glue, and put independent uh, puddles in there, about the size of a split pea. And I pushed both the sandy colored dry grass and a little bit of the green grass underneath it to make it look more like a, uh, a plant. And uh, I did, you do it randomly. You know, nothing in nature is... is uh, symmetrical it's it's pretty random so I, I did it as random as I could and you you have the ability to come back and trim these shorter then I took the glue and straight run right straight from the bottle I poured it down right in there and I filled that whole area up now I tilted you see the spacer here I had these spacers without the spacers it naturally tilted and wanted to flow down. That's how I got that uneven natural look. 
while it was still wet, I took dried moss that you can get at uh, Michael's or uh, nursery stores, and it you buy it in green. Now I stuffed it in here to let it dry because uh, I would prefer it to be a little more brown. Now this is about two years old and it's no longer real bright green. It's it's uh, more brown. Uh, I crush it and I use that as a coarse, um, coarse forest floor. That's what I call it. Coarse forest floor. This debris so that it gives it some thickness but I poured that on and then using the brush, did I do it with the brush? I brushed it into, into place like this. Brushed it right up onto it and at that point I let it dry. Now what I need to do is remove some of this because I'm going to replace it with more coarse sandy material. This I got at Michael's, it's scenic sand that the kids play with. I have fine sawdust to experiment with. I have uh, Autumn Joy sedum leaves I've crushed in yellow. And I got uh, scenic material here, yellow, yellow grass. And between those, I'm going to try to redo this area and make it look more like a desert. But before we do that, guys, you need to know that there's something called wet water that helps glue move through uh, move through your scenic material without bubbling up. I'd like to show you how I do the wet water, how I make wet water. Uh, first off, you need a sprayer. Now, this sprayer for the Dawn Power Wash works the best for me, and I'll tell you why. When you put scenic material down here and then spray it, let me get it pumped up, it'll, it'll blow it away if it isn't a super fine spray. Another thing you can do, which is much harder, is to get wet water and dribble it on. But in that case, uh, sometimes it wants to roll down and move the scenic material. So I find this spray to be the best. It can't be a coarse sprayer. It's got to be a real fine sprayer. Now, in order to make what we call wet water, you need about this much water. Not hot, not cold. And you need to put in a few drops of dishwashing solution or what's even better because it doesn't seem to sun suds up is dishwashing rinse aid so we're going to take this right here and that's plain water i'm going to put in about three four five six seven i find you can't use too much so i'm going to run with that so this is probably for four bucks a lifetime supply of this and I'm going to shake this up. Now it will foam, especially if you use uh, soap, dishwashing soap. It will foam up. So I'm going to do this ahead of time. I'm going to show you how we use this so that that foam settles down. Now, I want to take a brush and I'm going to brush this material that I put on the other day off. Now normally, if I would have liked it, I would have used a soap solution and I think to hold it down. And I think what we should do is work on that too. This is my 16 ounce uh, jug that I use for my 50-50 uh, white glue and water mix. Now, what I'll do, I've taken the liberty of taking the contents of this white glue, which is seven and a half ounces, and I poured it into there. Now I need seven and a half ounces of water. So 
what I'm going to do, this still has sticky glue in it, I'm going to pour it right in here, and this guarantees me that I get another seven and a half ounces. Get it to the top. Doesn't have to be all the way to the top, but you know, this is not an exact science, but it gives you an idea of how how to go about it. I'm going to shake this so that it, it absorbs any of the white glue that was left in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the remnants in here. Since this is seven and a half times two and this is 16, it should fit. Okay, this took me a second here. Okay, there's some of that glue. Okay, done. So this guy goes in the trash. And what we're going to use is this. Now I'm going to shake this up and let it settle down. Oh wait, you know what? I didn't put the soap in there. I need to put either three drops of soap or again some more of this rinse aid and I think the rinse aid works better. Now some people use alcohol for their wet water but I find that it evaporates too, too quickly for me to use. Uh, and some people use distilled water. I haven't found the difference between distilled water and regular water as long as it's got the rinse aid or some drops of soap in it, you'll be okay. Now, I don't know if I explained to you why you need to put the soaps in there. There's something called surface tension. And surface tension is what makes white glue on something you put down bubble up. You want it to blend right in and flow right out and get right to the root of all your scenic material to get to harden it. You don't want it sitting on the top and that's why you use the rinse aid. Okay, with that said, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to shake it up. I don't want it too foamy. And uh, we should shake this up for quite a while, but I don't want to bore the heck out of you more than I already am, guys. Okay, set those two aside. I'm going to brush this now and keep my, keep my uh, grass going up. I'm going to get some of this off. get a bigger brush. So we've taken the heavy uh, material off. Let me go to this here. That might give you a better look at what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to vacuum off this one. Okay. So what's on there, guys, is bonded real strong with the glue from the day before. Now, at this point, this is just your, your base surface, and we're going to build up from that. So what I'd like to do is start with a little bit of the sand, and I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a, a spoon, a teaspoon, and I'm going to begin to just lightly drift it on. Now, the secret to good scenery is inconsistency and making it look natural. You see how I leave some of the brown showing underneath? If I laid this end on right, right on it right thick, I don't think we'd get as good as an effect as we, we would otherwise. So let me finish this section. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm only going to do this area right here so that it doesn't take long and, and, and bore you guys. But you can see already it's it's changing the look of this. Now I can go ahead and add more. I can add less. Uh, I think that this dried sedum is going to be too coarse. So I might try fine sawdust. Let's see what that does for us. Um, you know, before we do that, what we should do 
is throw down some wet water right now so that it bonds and holds the stuff together. The sand doesn't move so much, but stuff like this fine sawdust will, will blow everywhere. So I know from experience. So I'm going to take the wet water, which was water with a few drops of uh, dishwashing soap, and I'm going to spray from a distance. Now you'll watch that move, even though it's even though it's just sand, you'll see it move. And what we're going to do is wet the whole thing down like that. Now the material won't be so apt to uh, move around on us. I'm going to, in this case, take a pinch of this because it's super fine. And I'm going to lay some of it in there and try to lighten the scenery up a little bit. Like that. Now, if I don't like what I see, which I think it came out too bright, don't you? We can do this. And we, because of that wet water, it won't uh, get brushed away. It'll sort of flow in. Like that. Now for, uh, for the next level, the next, the next layer, can't open it. I don't need to open it, it has a shaker. I'm going to lay some of this yellow grass on there. Let's see what we get. Okay, it's a little bit, it's a little bit less like a desert, isn't it? I think we had the best success with the sand. So what I'm going to do now is take my brush again, and I'm going to blend that in there. Keep it going inside there, like that. Hopefully you guys can see it. And uh, I'm going to put some more sand. And I'm going to add it to it. Now, I can take my dry brush and brush off the sand, I mean the grass, the grass. And I'm going to uh, brush any of the excess back in, like so. That looks better. Okay. Now what we're going to do is add a little plant life. I have these small green plants that uh, it's called gamer's grass that I got at a uh, Warhammer gaming shop. And there's different plants you can use. There's different. Uh, there's different tones, and I'm going to use this one right here because it's got a deserty, bushy kind of look. Now these come with adhesive pinned to them. You can see that. Um, once again, the manufacturer is Gamer's Grass. This one happens to be beige. And this is the information on it. And I'm going to stick it against the fence. Now, naturally, seeds get blown against a wall or a fence. They drop, and 90% of vegetation that's running wild out there is growing off of uh, a fence. So I'm going to stick a couple in there just for a fact. I don't want too many. don't want to make it look too wild. But along with the grass and these puffs of dried sagebrush, we have the base for what I think is going to be good. 
So at this point, I'm kind of hurrying here because I don't want to bore you guys. I am going to use some more wet water, but I need to make sure that all my sand is uniform and where it should be. Because once I put this glue down, it hardens. And I'm going to put two coats of glue on that. So I'm just going to do this section for you to see. Uh, we've shaken our 50-50 glue and water with a little bit of soap. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to use some more wet water to make sure that the glue flows as, as best as it can. Bring the wet water down. And now I'm going to dribble. Make sure that the grass is facing up like it should. If it's facing the wrong way, it won't look realistic. And I'm going to dribble on some of this glue. Now, when you first see it, you think, oh no, it's, it's puddling, it's not flowing properly. It's clear, it'll dry clear, and if I uh, want to get it on the fence to harden that, I can. Uh, this actually acts as a bonding agent and uh, it solidifies everything. Now this is just going to be the first coat that I'm going to put on. The next coats uh, will be on tomorrow. And then if there's some place where the kids run their hands across it real hard, uh, where it could be stripped off, I will go ahead and put a third coat. So it, if you think that it isn't spreading enough, you can put some more water on it, uh, wet water, the water with the soap on it. However, if you're on an incline, it'll tend to run, and you don't want to do that. Because uh, if I were to put my finger in there and try to stop that from running, I'll change the look of the, of the sand and the, and the dirt or whatever I have down inside there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that for you so you can see what happens. If I spray the wet water, you'll see it dissipate. And as crummy as that looks right now, tomorrow it'll be crystal clear. And you'll see right through it, and all you're going to see is the scenic material, and it'll stay firm and solid. So, tried to make it as short as I could. Uh, you see that I made a mistake. It's forgiving. You can go back and fix it. If this doesn't look good tomorrow, I can even scrape it off and start again if I want to. Don't be afraid of doing your own scenic uh, material on your, on your uh, layout. Um, and if you have any questions, write in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, please. Here's a look at the first coat of glue and water on our material completed. Keep everything drawing as thoroughly as possible. So here everyone is the finished product. 24 hours of drying and we put enough glue that since this won't be touched on a regular basis up on a shelf, I don't get, need to give it a second coat. You can see the details. So all in all, I'm very happy. And so my friends, this is the finished product. 
of the shelf that will go up uh, onto the wall. This is how it'll appear uh, with all the details in it of club racing under two liters.